A very wise man once said, you can't fix stupid. Today, I am going to compare the only three 50 watt wideband GMRS mobile radios that you can buy as of April 2022. So if you have a tiny 5 watt handheld radio and suffer from feelings of inadequacy because some YouTube hobo clown keeps talking about those 50 watt radios, after watching this video you will know which one will help you compensate the best. As I just mentioned, as of April 2022, if you want a mobile GMRS 50 watt wideband radio, there are only three to choose from. The BTEC GMRS 50X1, the Wuxin Ocean KG1000G, and the Midland MXT 500. And I am about to quickly go over all of the strengths and weaknesses of all three of these 50 watt mobile GMRS wideband radios. I will not be doing a full review of all of these radios. I have already done full reviews of all of these radios. This will be more of a comparison of the three radios, a high level overview of the three so that you can decide which radio is best for you, my favorite viewer. And then after you watch the entire video, if you have any questions, you leave a comment below. Speaking of comments, as you may know, if you've watched any of my previous videos, this channel, my channel, has very strict rules about comments, unlike most other YouTube channels. Stupid comments, off-topic comments, get deleted with extreme prejudice because I don't want my channel to be a cesspool of stupid, like Reddit or all those other YouTube channels. But not on this video. On this video, I am going to leave the comments wide open. So the next time somebody whines or complains or asks why I always delete off topic and stupid comments, I'll just point to this video as an example of why. So knock yourself out to comment free for all in this video, but be warned, if you leave a smart, thoughtful, or concise comment, I will pin it to the top for everyone to marvel at. The first radio that I will be comparing is the BTEC GMRS 50X1 radio. The price for the BTEC GMRS 50X1 radio is $219. Feel it link below. The 50X1 is an SOC radio. That is the less expensive type of circuitry. SOC means system on a chip. And that means, based on my experience with two of these radios, that they have very poor selectivity. And what that means is that when you select a channel that you're listening to, it doesn't filter out other channels or bleed over very well. So you will often hear static or bleed over from other channels. It also usually means that the squelch does not work very well. So no matter how high you turn up the squelch, you're still going to get a lot of that static and bleed over. It is a small radio. Standard SO239 antenna connector on the back and a plug for a external speaker. It has a fan. It is fairly solid, but it is not the best built radio I've ever encountered. It is repeater capable, but you cannot have multiple repeaters with the same tones and you are limited to only eight repeaters. It can receive commercial FM radio. It can also receive, this is receive only, VHF frequencies 136 to 174 megahertz and UHF frequencies 400 to 520 megahertz. It has 226 channels, memory slots that you can program for those frequencies to scan through. One nice thing about this radio is that it can receive four channels at the same time. That means you can listen to four different things at once. You'll see there that there are four slots for different channels. Right now I have it set to only receive two at once, but you can monitor up to four frequencies at once or four times the confusion. As you can see, it has a fancy, colorful screen with lots of useless information, but the screen is rather small at under two inches or right at two inches. And because of that small screen, it is very difficult to read in your vehicle. It has a relatively small speaker. It is not very loud compared to the other radios. 
and you can program it either on the radio or using the microphone. On the box, it does say it is a 50 watt radio, but I have had two of these radios and have never got more than 30 watts out of either one of them. When I contacted BTEC tech support, I was told that the reason for that is because I was using the wrong kind of meter. The radio is not simple or very easy to set up and use. It can be very confusing, especially when trying to get those four different frequencies to do what you want them to do. It can be somewhat confusing, so it is not the easiest of radios to use. The next radio is the Wuxin Ocean KG-1000G. The price for the Wuxin Ocean KG-1000G is $369. Affiliate link below. The KG-1000G is a super heterodyne receiver. That means it is a higher quality receiver than the SOC or system on a chip type receivers. That means that it has much better selectivity. And in my experience, this means that when the SOC radios would be receiving static and bleed over from other channels or nearby high power transmitters, the KG-1000G is silent. The KG-1000G is repeater capable. By the way, all of these radios are repeater capable and they all do split tones. On the KG-1000G, you can program over 900 different repeaters using the same tones. It has a large, simple, easy to read screen. And the beauty of the KG-1000G is that the screen is removable. The whole front screen slides off here and it comes with a 15 foot cable that plugs into the radio. You then mount the faceplate wherever you want in your vehicle. And that is great. So you can basically throw this under the seat or wherever and then mount your faceplate up where you can actually see it. And it comes with a couple of different mounting brackets so that you can change the angle as you can see, this is slightly upturned, but they have a straight facing one as well. That feature makes the KG-1000G one of my favorite radios. The KG-1000G can monitor two frequencies at a time. As you can see, I've got GMRS channel 20 here and the Delta repeater, which is a local repeater, part of the Nata Rubicon network here. You can also turn that off easily if that's too confusing. Now I'm listening only to the Delta repeater. It's got programmable buttons. You can make them do almost whatever you want. Relatively simple interface. It has two speakers on the radio, one for each channel or frequency that you're monitoring. So in this example on GMRS 20, all the noise would come out of that speaker and the Delta repeater, all the noise would come out of that speaker. You can also connect a external speaker Shut up. You can actually connect two external speakers, one for each frequency. Standard SO239 connector. It has a fan with controls so that you can change how and when and how often the fan comes on. You cannot disable it completely though. And you can program the KG-1000G either on the radio itself or through the microphone. The microphone also has a speaker inside of it with a separate volume control. So you can hold it up to your ear and listen. That is especially helpful if you're in a loud vehicle, like a ratty old Jeep. The KG-1000G receives many frequencies, can receive from 50 to 53 megahertz, 108 to 179 megahertz, 108 to 136 megahertz in AM band. All the others are FM, 320 to 349 megahertz, 400 to 479 megahertz and 700 to 985 megahertz. And it can store over 900 of those frequencies in channels that you can scan through. I have used and tested five or six of these radios and every one of them, when I put them on my meter, output 47 to 49 watts, exactly as expected. For the number of features it has, it is fairly easy to use. And in my opinion, is much easier to figure out and set up than the BTEC. And finally, we have the Midland MXT500. The price for the Midland MXT500 is $399. A 
affiliate link below. This is the most expensive of all the radios, but it also comes with a magnetic mount antenna and cable. The antenna is small, but it is a surprisingly good antenna. It comes with the cable, it comes with everything you need in the box to get up and running very easily. The Midland MXC500 is an SOC receiver, so it is not as high quality of a receiver as a super heterodyne type circuit. This also means it may be more susceptible to static and bleed over from nearby high power transmissions. The MXC500 has an IP66 rating. This means that it is nearly fully waterproof, unlike the others. So you could put it in your ATV or submarine and not worry about it getting wet or rained on or splashed on. And it also has a USB-C plug that you can use to plug your phone in and charge it up. It is repeater capable, but it does not have channels 8 through 14. Mobile radios are not allowed by the FCC to transmit on channels 8 through 14. So the BTEC and the Wuxin Ocean receive channels 8 through 14, but they don't transmit on channels 8 through 14. The Midland MXT 500 doesn't even have them. It just skips right over them. This is not really an issue, but it's something that you should be aware of. The MXT 500 has a large, very simple, and very easy to read screen. It's only able to listen to one frequency at a time. So it's very simple, no confusion. And it is only able to receive GMRS channels and weather channels, the NOAA channels. I have tested two of these radios and they both tested right at 46 to 49 watts. Although I did hear rumors of early production units being underpowered, but as far as I know, that is no longer an issue. It has a very simple and solid microphone. It has a standard SO239 connector and an intercom connector, as well as a plug for an external speaker. This radio is extremely easy to use. You basically turn it on and select the channel. All of the radios come with these standard GMRS channels right out of the box, so no programming is necessary. Although remember, this one does not come with channels 8 through 14, but you can take it out of the box and start using it after you plug in the antenna and the coax cable that comes with it. This radio is made not for radio dorks, but for normal people that just want to be able to listen to or talk to other people, for example, off-roading or adventuring. So if you're going camping or on an off-road safari and the people in charge said that you needed a GMRS radio, the MXT is perfect. Very basic, very easy to use. Now the burning question is, which radio is the best? And the answer is, it depends. It depends on how you define best. If all you care about is the price and you want a radio for the least number of dollars, then the BTEC 50X1 would be the best for you. If what's important to you is a very capable radio that can talk to many, many repeaters and do pretty much everything, then the Wuxin Ocean KG1000G would be the best for you. If you want something that is very easy to use and simple to set up, then the MXT 500 would be best for you. Now feel free to leave your stupid comments below, but be warned that smart, concise, thoughtful comments will be pinned to the top for everyone to enjoy.